Miss. Shakila slips from the shade behind the library, blinking in the sports day sun. I wonder again what Shakila does to her hijab and why it seems to sit fuller and higher than the other girls. A mother superior hijab or one from a vermeer. It can't be starched. Maybe it's draped over twisted horns of hair like Carrie Fisher's in Star Wars. That would go with her furry eyebrows, her slanting, sparking black eyes, her general Mongolian ferocity. Miss, cries Shakila, I won the 400 metres. You did? Isn't it Ramadan? Aren't you fasting? Shakila nods. I still won. And Miss, I'm coming to Poetry Group after the hurdles. Here, poem. She hands me a sheet of A4 and dashes back into the playing field. It is 28 degrees and getting hotter. Under her rugby shirt and long trousers, Shakila grows thin. The poem, though, is very fine. A variation on a theme I gave the group last week, contrasting the morning, morning Adham from the mosque in her native Afghanistan with the alarms of her new life in England. I'm more interested, though, in the writing on the other side of the sheet, which she has crossed out with a single line, so the whole text is still visible and begging to be read. It's about a man sweating in a scarf and a backpack and suspicious minds, so when, because of sports day, just Lily and Priya turn up to poetry group, I ask her about it. Oh, she says, I was trying to write, you know, about terrorists. What about terrorists? But I couldn't work it, make it work. Miss, it was too hard. Terrorists here, in this country. I'm assuming the poem is a protest against suspicion, suspicion of Muslims in Britain. I'm aware there are a group of Afghans in the neighbourhood now. The local cafe has a new name and a map of Afghanistan on the wall and an invitation to order a whole sheep 24 hours in advance. I got in a discussion with the cook about the poet Rumi. He looked just like Shakila, come to think of it, so maybe... No, miss, says Shakila, eyes snapping, ivory fingers blossoming in scorn. In England? There are no terrorists in England. She's from Afghanistan, says Lily. She means the Taliban. Lily is an alternative type, a goth with heavy eyeliners, eyeliner who always knocks about with black girls. Nevertheless, I assume this is a white stereotype, and I'm about to correct her when Shakila nods, more vehement than ever. Miss, I am Hazara people. Like the kite runner, says Lily, glancing at me smugly. I don't know, says Shakila. It's a book, I say, about Afghanistan. It's on the A-level, isn't it, Lily? The Taliban, says Shakila, hate us. When my mum went to get our visa, miss, the bus was bombed. Not her bus, but the one in front. Miss, I thought she would never come home. But, says Lily, I thought you were Muslim. Muslim. She offers me a monster munch. Usually, at poetry group, Shakila brings us cherries and strawberries, shining like the roses in her cheeks. She and Priya are pale today. I am Muslim, says Shakila. I am Shia. What's that? asks Lily. I raise an eyebrow. Clearly, this wasn't in the kite runner. A different kind of Muslim, I fill in, like Protestant and Catholic. The Taliban hate the Shia, says Shakila flatly. They kill us all the time. Priya leans across the table. Her dress is to the floor, her hijab is soft, striped and biblical, her teeth in, are in braces, and her face, as so often, is full of delicate feeling. She is from ba Bangladesh originally, a Sunni. Miss, she says, but she's talking to Shakila. When I found out about that, when I learned there are other kinds of Muslim, I didn't believe it. I said to my teacher in the mosque, this is not true, how can this be? There is only one Quran, says Shakila, there is only one Allah. Priya says, Miss, don't laugh. When I was a little girl, I thought the television was true. I mean, the black and white. I thought the past was black and white, Miss. I thought England was black and white. When I found out about Shia and Sunni, it was like that for me. I mean, when I found I was wrong. You should write that down, says Lily. This is poetry group. How old was you when you came here, Priya? Six. Priya often writes about it. Beautiful poems. Me, I was 14, says Shakila. Sunni Shia, there's no difference really, says Priya, just some prayers. Wait, do you whip yourselves? No, snorts Shakila. I mean, not really. It is a thingy, a symbol. She leans her hijab to Priya's hijab, puts her hands across the table. You know, she says, in my country, they caught this terrorist, this bomber. They put him on television. He said he was doing it for the Taliban, but he didn't know anything. 
He did not know. She breaks into Arabic, sharp and triumphant. Ashu hadu ala alila alila. Ashu hadu ana Muhammada Rasula chimes in Priya. Both girls bow their heads. What's that? asks Lily. And Shakila gazes at her. A prayer, she says, one everyone knows. Except the Taliban fighter didn't know it, I say, or not with a gun to his head. But, says Lily, this bloke, the Taliban bloke on the telly, was he the same as in this poem? No, says Shakila, this was another one. Priya raises her head. How can a Muslim hate another Muslim? Miss, it is terrible, miss. A real terrorist, says Lily, in your poem, like you met him. Yes, says Shakila, I saw him in the street, in the market. I had this feeling he is wrong, he is sweating, he wears all these clothes. What clothes? Like, you know, jacket, big thingy, scarf, big trousers, it is hot in summer. I had a feeling, run away, run away from this guy. I catch my friend's hands, we run. Yes, says Lily, but was he real, a real terrorist? Yes, says Shakila, real. I ran, I screamed, I ran, everyone ran. There was an explosion. I was hiding behind a thingy wall. He was in a bomb. He was in a bomb. He was a bomb. He exploded. You heard it. Boom. And then the bell rings for a long time and we flinch from its noise. Priya says, you need a frame for your poem. Miss, give her a frame. A frame. I have taught them this. Each week we look at a literary shape, a form, a piece of rhetoric, and they try it out for themselves. I don't suggest they might what they might write about just the way they might write it. A frame, I say every week. Try this frame. Never tell me about. Certainly not unload your trauma. And still, they tell me these terrible things. Yes, says Shakila, a frame. How shall I say it, miss? I haven't the slightest idea. Shakila folds her hands on her bag, waits. That, says Lily, was a really good discussion. I reckon we should have filmed it. Like for RE, I have to go. And she goes. So does Priya, leaving me to search my mind for the right frame for a poem about recognising a terrorist in the marketplace and then running away. Shakila says, Miss, you know bombs? Miss, the worst thing is they cut you. They cut off bits of you, Miss, like your feet, your leg. And when the bomb goes off, Miss, those thingies, body parts, I suggest, automatically? Yes. Shakila's eyes brighten as they do when she cites a really fine piece of vocabulary. Body parts. Body parts, they land on the town around. Did that happen in that bomb, I asked, the bomb in your poem? Did you see that? Miss, she said, when I was in the place behind the wall, a head came over, a whole head. His head, I ask, the terrorists. Just, she says, you know, a head in a scarf, a woman, a head. Right, I say. I look at the sunlight coming in the slats of the blinds and I suggest that the interrogative mood might be good for poems like this and short lines probably and regular stanzas, a ballad perhaps or a set of instructions, how to recognise a terrorist. Shakila says she will send me the poem by email and she leaves. I sit and stare, listen to the roar of the children finding their classrooms, the silence as the door closes, and the register is taken. This is an orderly school, I remind myself a just one, a safe one. As Lily said, it is beautiful to see Shakila and Priya extend hands across the table. More people should know. Then I think I will go to the staff room and find someone to tell. There'll be someone there, someone to listen and to counter with some equal hor equally horrifying tale. And we will rehearse all the interventions available, all the help school extends, which is good help, the best available anywhere, the best anyone can do. We will remind each other that this is why we work here, why our school does so well, our multicultural intake, our refugee pupils, so motivated, so very often brilliant, so, in the modern parlance, vibrant. But it won't do any good. Here in my ears is the sound of a bomb, a homemade one, a glass and fertiliser one, in a small town in Afghanistan, and it sounds like the school bell. And here on the desk, disguised as a sheet of A4 paper, is a head cut off at the neck, its eyes shut, its bloodstains minimal, its skin greenish like John the Baptist on a plate. Shakila's head in its elaborate hijab, for how else am I to picture the Hazara people, Persian speakers, 
Genghis Khan's soldiers, lovers of the poet Rumi, other than as my dear, my swift running Shakila. Does she feel the lighter of it, I wonder, now it is me who has to carry the head home? Or will it be equally heavy, however often it is passed, just as much a head? Well, we can find out. Shakila's head, the weight of it, the warmth, the cheekbones, the brains. Here you are. Catch. <laughs>